This is Woodworking 101. This is the main wood shop. Rough lumber, basic shaping. So we'll take the raw timber and then we'll be putting it into, making it into cabinets like this. And it's built out of a combination of uh, honeycomb, four mil plywood, keep the weight down. I, I love stuff I like, I really love stuff like this. Back on the 1600, haven't been on one of these for like two years, three years. Where this all started. I know. Okay, so we've obviously gone through the uh, the timber shop and also the upholstery shop, and just it's good context here. This is the 1600, just to see, you know, the the outcome of all that work. So this boat's about to go in the water in about two to three weeks' time for a US customer that's um, taking delivery locally and going to be sailing around Asia. I think the game plan is surfing, kite surfing, and cruising. So he's. Yeah. So just, I've got some questions that have just immediately sprung to mind. Yeah. The table on the 1370, is it the same as the similar design? It's not the same design as this, no. It's a, I think we've got a leafed table, but it's not the same as this. This yeah. has got a, a, a yeah, pretty intricate level of detail on the is 1600. Is that standard? Check out. Like yes. Chessboard. This is the kind of detail that you can afford to do in, in Vietnam. And, and this is sort of... That's beautiful. It's when... Yeah, when Yeah, yeah it's can, hand laid. So when that. we talk about why are we in Vietnam and our boats better in Vietnam than they were in Australia? This is the kind of stuff where we can afford to do it. The labor is cheaper, so we can do this kind of detail to some extent. Now, obviously, if we do this on everything, the theory sort of runs out of steam, doesn't it? But, but we are able to do high level uh, joinery in Vietnam. It's one of the skills that they do have in Vietnam. So is the quality the same or, or, That's or worse? It's, I find it's better. That's what we have to do. We have to deliver better than uh, than what we were doing elsewhere. No, no, it's, look, as I said, yeah, yeah that. That's beautiful. Thank, well done, yeah. Kevin. That's yeah. like amazing work. The other thing to note, I know it's been uh, discussed. Now, the 1600 as standard has a, a solid surface uh, bench top. And this is the kind of fiddle that we'll be putting on. If you have a Corian uh, 1370 bench top, you'll have the same sort of fiddle. Pretty minimal, but it's just enough that you know, anything that's rolling off is going to get caught. And then likewise, when we do a composite, so the base boat has a composite bench top that also will have a fiddle, probably a little bit less pronounced, but it does have a fiddle. So this is the Corian that you're going to use on 1370? Slightly different, but same tone. It's actually, this is a, a slightly different product. For the 1600, we have a thicker material. For the 1370, we're actually using Corian because we're going down a size. Right. But basically, from all intents and purposes, this is what you'll be looking at. Okay. And you've got the same sort of setup where we'll have we, we router in some uh, drain holes that, that feed into the sink so that you can have a draining rack. And I do believe that the oven, that's the dual function oven that we're getting? Yeah, that's correct. It's a pretty sweet area, this, actually. In terms of, like, the finishing comfort, I mean, that we, we do put everything into the 1600. I mean, I'm assuming that the 1370 will have the same level of comfort, but the finish, you're not putting, like, inlaid chessboards into the table. The execution is the same standard, but the content might be of a slightly lesser standard. Yeah. So yeah, no no chessboards. But the guys, when you actually go on a, um, if you go on an 1160 or 1260 and you look at the way that that joinery is done, it's the same guys, same team, and they do it no, to no, the same it's, standard. No, no, it's yeah. beautiful. But I also ask the cockpit table, because a little bit nice, is the cockpit table of the 1370, is it like the 1600 in that kind of like nice Correct. composite? Yeah. This yeah. Is, look, these are beautiful boats. And yeah. It's too big for us. We're too, there's only two of us. So Easy View 5, which is a, monitoring system. That's Seizone, yeah? No, no, no. This is the Master Vault Easy View 5. Oh, okay. Monitoring. This is where, when you go to the lithium, you can see the um, the Alpha Pro alternators banging in all the power, and you can see what you're getting through here. And that comes when, so we'll get that When one you also. get lithium. Yeah. So this comes as standard. Yep. The lithium gets plugged into that. This is very much the standard configuration that you get on the 1370, though, yep. where you will have these standard older style breakers which are physical switches and they've got a they've actually got a physical breaker behind it as well so that's the base boat configuration when you go to the c zone you get rid of this and you have the digital switching where you can turn everything off yeah. from the from the touch screen but the easy view 5 is is standard we uh, decided to put that in for the 1370 just so we've got much better visibility and control and, and able to monitor components so the question is so 1370 nav station 12 inch top but you're going to have some power yeah. supplies yeah. a lamp yeah easy view 5 yes at the nav yeah and then and then you can also get a um, get your uh, C-zone control there as so, well. So we'll have the C-zone control, then there's the yeah. isolators. And I think yeah. we've asked for a dedicated uh, autopilot, plus or minus for... Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's enough space. And then VHF. And the chair, would that be a similar chair? 
Similar, yeah. I mean, on the 1600, we, we matched the upholstery over. Yeah. That's uh, to be confirmed on how we're doing that. I, we just, just, we've got to work through the geometry of the nav desk to check that it's going to work. But it'll be a similar setup, definitely. We recognise that if, you, if you're having a nav desk, get one that's comfortable. Yeah, so absolutely. it's a nice, good quality chair. Because yeah. yeah. if you are going to, say, sit there for passage making or just doing, for, I mean, for you guys, just doing a bit of work as yeah. well, you want something that's good quality. Well, yeah. night watch, for night watches, you need to be like, alert and, mm. you know, comfortable, comfortable yeah. nice cup of cocoa. And the other thing I was going to ask about the 1370, you can drop the table and turn it into a berth. Yeah, we'll do, we have the same for the 1370. So basically, so down. when we're shorthanded, one of us sleeps there, one of us at the nav desk, so we're all, always sure. like, able. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's good. We'll do that. Maybe. Yeah. You're excited about getting our boat now, aren't you? Yeah, I, yeah, I am actually. It's still four months away, and I'm like, if I get too excited, then I'm going to make her life a misery. She kicked me last night during Bridgerton because I was making too much mess and noise. <laughs> I can't help you with that. I can get you a boat. I can't help you with Bridgerton. <laughs> now, I talk about this a lot. This work surface is huge. It's going to be a similar size work surface in Ruby Rose too. So, things that I can see that I absolutely love, and we know, because we talked to Mike earlier, that they're taking this into Ruby Rose too. Korean work surfaces. That aesthetically for us is important. Something to appreciate about the 1370 is that we don't get all this. This is completely flat. So this is all gonna lift up like the trifold door in the 1260. And so you can sit the other side of this with the breakfast bar that pulls out. And so for us, it is even more important that this area, this whole galley area is practical and aesthetic this type of work service, absolutely brilliant. The second thing that we really wanted to work with when we were told about the 1370 was the nav station. This is where you're gonna sit. You are looking at height, you are looking for the ability to see where your sails are. There's no mast on this boat, obviously. By moving my head six inches, I have more than 180 degrees of vision. We can sit here, we can look at the battery usage, we can look at radar, we can look at AIS, we can look at our position. This we are not having because we are moving to the C-Zone system, which is another small screen. But then in addition to that, one thing that we have asked for is a second autopilot control. Obviously, you can control the autopilot from the helm, but I like being able to push buttons very, very quickly. Third feature I actually love about the 1370 that this boat doesn't have is those large opening windows as per the 1260. Now, there's aircon running in here, and our aircon will run on a 12-volt system, so we can run the aircon while in a marina from our house back bank we haven't got to be plugged into AC. This will all be opened up and that will all be opened up and there's gonna be a whole passage of air coming through. For us being able to lift all that up and take an area of a boat and turn it into something that functions in a different way while you're at anchor is super practical for us. I don't know and explode when we get this boat. Upholstery. So we're just gonna talk in depth about the upholstery that we are putting onto our boat. I love this sort of stuff. This is the thing that makes our home our home. Yeah, so we do all of our upholstery uh, in here for the internals and the exterior cushions. We've got a, a separate space out in the factory where we do our sail bags and canvases and things like that. I mean, our team here that we've been developing over the years really developed some good skills here. And we, and we use a whole range of different materials that some of which are imported, some of which are local. The main thing that's what people ask us about the upholstery stuff is, you know, am I getting the real quality material? And we buy Sunbrella from either US or Europe, yep. or we're buying Viva Fabrics, which comes out of Holland, I believe. And, you know, so we're importing all of the, the actual uh, soft furnishing material. Likewise, all of the threads and things we use, we're getting that they come out of the UK. Yeah, you know, we've got a whole range of things going on here. We've got a, a seat back going on here. So this is for, a, for one of the smaller sea winds. We have a foam backer that we, we cut to shape, and then we then upholster over the top of this component. You glass this, you glass the joints? Yes, yeah, that's glassed, really? yeah. You glass yeah. It so it's is completely it? sealed. So once it's all been cut and shaped and done, we then completely resin coat it so it's sealed timber. Over here we've got another, uh, probably a little bit further developed. So this is a seat base. base to that That's the base for this one. So this is a saloon seat for uh, the 1260. The foam's already in there. Uh, it's like a Dacron. Exactly. Dacron, and it's got a, if you actually feel that, Nick, you've got a, like a bit of soft padding on the top. Yep. It just gives that initial uh, comfort level. Yeah, yeah. And it also, it actually gives the cushion a little bit more of a sort of a plumped Look to it. Look. Yeah, yeah. Never, never did I think I'd be discussing plumped cushions with Mike. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so, uh, but then we've got a uh, locator, so that'll have a timber surround yep. that'll then get screwed on. So on our um, furniture moulding, we have a recess, 
uh, where you can then access the batteries and things, but then this has got a timber uh, uh, piece that's mounted onto that that fits into the recess that locates the seat socket from sliding saw, around. We had those in the 12 they they're yeah. really useful actually. Yeah. Side clears. Side clears, exactly. What's the material, Kev? Crystal view. They all get cut for a template and then they get yeah. fitted to the boat. We have to try and sort of factor in the temperature here, obviously we're in a hot climate here, so we have to try and anticipate some kind of shrinkage so we don't get it super tight. Then you've got quilt covers. And then you've got your fabric samples. So we've got things like clears. We do the internal cushions that we were just looking at there. Yep. But then we've got the external cushions as well. So we use slightly different foams for that sort of stuff. So self-training ones. Exactly, yeah. Basically it allows the water to run straight through the yep. foam if they do get wet. The other work that the, this team does as well in the other um, site we've got in the factory is we do all the canvas work. Sail bags, awnings and things that we do for the various different boats we'll, we'll do through this team as well. We're using Sunbrella. Um, that stuff is bomb proof. We had it on Ruby Rose and the stitching went twice before the Sunbrella went. It's pretty interesting, huh? Yeah. Then we go through, we've got all our testing. So we've got all the tank testing that's been done here, pressure okay, testing. So you literally go through and say, okay, so you sign up on all this. We've got the, the team leader. QC supervisor and the production manager. So part of the CE process is you actually have to test the, the systems, okay. the pressure systems. So, and we've actually just done a, a test where we um, we found a failure, which is good to, to identify that. So yeah, we have all of our QC stuff here where we run through all of the, we've got critical checks and then we've got our, our lower, lower um, critical checks. So actually one thing that we have got as a mop up here is the boom of, this is a 1600, but we're getting the same system on the 1370. The reason it's important is that there is this system which allows flaking of the mainsail without increasing weight. So it's it, it's not a Park Avenue boom, but by coming out like this, you have these additional safety bars which have got netting underneath. And this is a really, really good mock-up because obviously as we kind of like, as they make the sails and the sail bag for the 1370, she's got a big old mast on her. So she's going to have big sails. And so the boom will not be able to hold the sails without them kind of flopping out of the side. Doing it this way, what you've got is you can increase the width of the, 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 captive, the captive area for the, for the sail bag. So again, this probably sits out about a foot each side. So we've got a really big area to catch the sail, which means you're going to get easier drops, therefore easier raises, all pretty straightforward. So I really, really hope you enjoyed that episode. If you liked what we saw today, give us a like, give us a thumbs up, click the notification bell, subscribe to our channel, and as Ruby Rose 2 becomes close to launch, we will bring you even more footage. So take care, and we'll see you again next week. Goodbye.